on my last video, the ultimate go high level workflow tutorial for beginners, just a digital marketer commented advanced tutorial win. And I replied back to him and asked him what kind of questions or topics would you like me to discuss during an advanced tutorial, but he hasn't gotten back to me. So I took initiative and I'm going to show you today how to integrate chat GPT and AI into go high level workflows. Specifically, we're going to look at these three examples on lead nurturing with email at uh, using GPT history, which is super new, then sending product or um, it doesn't have to be a physical product. It can be an online product. It can be a call, but basically sending recommendations using chat GPT for, and then also using it within Facebook comments, which is a pretty new workflow as well. So stick around and check this out. And if you stick to the end of this video, I'm actually going to show you how you can get all three of these automations completely for free immediately into your own high level account. So let's start with one dot lead nurturing using GPT history. And again, GPT history is super new to high level. Um, so definitely check it out and play around with it. This video is more about inspiring ideas and then you taking those ideas and personalizing it for your business, your niche, whatever you might be working on. So the original um, trigger at the top of this workflow was form submitted, but to test it out, I added this trigger subscribe uh, just as a dummy trigger so I could uh, test it out without submitting an actual form. After that, we've got the first AI workflow action step. So the action name is GPT powered by OpenAI, and we can select the model right here. So you could select GPT 4 Turbo, 4O, whatever you might want to. I've heard 4O is one of, again, the most advanced, efficient, cheapest models. So I would usually go with 4O. And then you can see we've got a couple of di different action types. So we could analyze text sentiment. We could classify text coming soon. Might be another topic for another video. We've got summarize text, translate content, and then custom. And so I've got custom selected right here right now. And custom basically means you give it a custom prompt. So prompt engineering with AI is very, very powerful and it's a skill in and of its own. And these prompts that I'm using in here right now, they're very, very basic prompts. So they definitely can be overhauled. And I do actually have a video on prompt engineering and how you can use AI to do the prompt engineering for you. So if you want to learn more on that topic, then check out this video right here. It's about 40 minutes long, but I really put a lot of work and effort into the presentation. I worked on it for weeks and weeks, and it's a very good strategy. And at the end of this video, I actually also share a free course on how you can uh, get access to, yeah, all the different AI strategies that I utilize within my own business. Back in high level, we gave it the prompt. A customer has submitted the form, prepare a welcome email for contact first name, also give a brief about the webinar. And so we can use custom fields, custom values with this little tag button right here within the prompt, which is insane if you think about it. So you could use appointment data, calendar data, message, account data, uh, custom values, user specific data, context uh, specific data with their address, their birth date, any kind of unique data to that contact and it'll always populate for that contact specifically. And so this is a very short prompt, like I said. And um, if we click on advanced options down here, you can see that we've set up a temperature and that we're giving it further system instructions and telling it that it's a sales executive handling the personal finance webinar leads for our company. So I would play around with this. Again, personalize these simple prompts for your niche, uh, be a little bit creative, and then play around because sometimes a, a simple prompt with very simple instructions like the ones we have right here work better. And sometimes more advanced prompts with de more detailed instructions work better. So you'll have to find the balance between the two. And if we scroll a little bit further up, we can see we've got this toggle on here, enable history. That's mainly what this is about. We can toggle it on, we can toggle it off, and we can select what kind of chat GPT history do we want? Because it's basically saving the personalized data from this contact within high level and saying, hey, do you want to consider the history that we've had with this contact or not? And then if you do want to consider the history, consider the history for this workflow specifically, for this execution specifically, for this step specifically, or a custom history. So this is very, very powerful. Definitely check this out. And again, play around with it. One of my models in high level is go fast and break things. So definitely play around and just go through this workflow multiple times, test it out. 
and um, really try to automate your business with the power of AI. So uh, yeah, I, I deleted the instruction here, but I did mention it earlier. And then you could also exclude um, certain history or responses from the history. But I'll go ahead and hit save or cancel because I did make some changes. And then we'll basically send the welcome email. And in this welcome email, we'll have this chat GPT one response. So this basically means we'll take the response from this action step over here and we'll send it in this email right here in the message itself. We could put something in the subject line if we wanted to, uh, but we're just hard coding the subject line in as welcome and we're putting the response in right here. And if you're wondering, where do you get this from? You again, click on these custom values or custom fields, you click on GPT, and then that's the first response right here. And you would pretty much just select that and then it'll populate right there. After that, we'll just wait for one day. So this is a classical email nurture. We'll then uh, create a, a second chat GPT prompt uh, or action step. And again, to get that, you can just go in here and you could just type in GPT powered by OpenAI. And then this is pretty much that action step. So I'll hit cancel here. We'll go ahead and look at this action step right here. It's basically just saying, hey, after the first email, send a second email. This will include an, a link uh, with youtube.com. So again, we're just playing around and trying to inspire ideas here. And then in the second email, you would include ChatGPT response number two. I actually tested out this workflow just a couple of minutes ago with this first welcome email. So let's jump into my Gmail. Uh, don't be surprised by the 755 unread emails. I can clean that up within a week, I promise. I've just been very busy. Um, but pretty much this is the email that based on the exact prompt that I showed you guys just a minute ago, this is the email that it created. So it's not perfect. It needs a little bit of fine tuning, but it's, it's amazing if you think about the potential of this. So it did put the subject line into the actual email, which is not ideal. Here's the actual subject line that we defined and you would just adjust the prompt a little bit and make it more specific uh, according to, you know, hey, like don't put the subject line, don't write a subject line, we've already got it. You would kind of put that in the prompt and then it would just send the email message body itself. And it's saying, thank you for signing up for our upcoming webinar on personal finance. We're thrilled to have you join us and are confident you will find the session both informative and empowering. And so I'm pretty surprised that it got the format of the email very, very well. It's, it put some nice spacing in. This looks like a human written, well-designed email, and you wouldn't think that it was uh, written by ChatGPT specifically. And so again, this is where prompt engineering comes in. I'm not saying the content of this email, the copy of this email is good, but again, thinking that we, or ChatGPT just created it within seconds for us and we didn't have to do anything um, is amazing. So definitely check that out. Um, I would also add some of the company data and uh, just test it. Test it before you send it to actual leads, actual customers, and perfect again that prompt. Because again, that's what's all that that's what ChatGPT is all about is prompt engineering and testing it out, making sure that it works. But this simple little message right here basically turned into this super long email right here, which is awesome. I don't want to spend too much more time on this workflow because we do have two other examples to look at. Um, and the next steps are again, very similar. Uh, like I said earlier with a prompt and then the email uh, or the prompt output within the email. And then here we've got a wait step until the uh, trigger link is clicked and we're waiting for three days. And here we've got an if else condition saying, hey, was the trigger link clicked? yes or no, or here it says email event and not trigger link, but was it clicked, yes or no? If it wasn't clicked, we're on the none branch, the customer has not clicked the link, then let's prepare a follow-up email and reshare the intro link. And so this is where this history comes in. So it's remembering, ChatGPT, we've got the GP, ChatGPT history for each and every contact and it's remembering. And so that's why the prompt instructions on this email right here are relatively short. And if we go to advanced options, you know, it's just given a little bit of context again, but super short, super simple. So definitely try this out again. And then if we do, uh, if they did click the trigger link, then we say, hey, the user did click the intro link. Thank him for watching and let's make some money. <laughs>
Since I've been using high level for the last three years, sometimes it's kind of hard for me to judge. Should I dive deeper into tutorials like this or is this pretty basic for other people? Um, so let me know if you need like further and more detailed videos on how do I create an if else condition like this one right here? Uh, how, you know, how do these branches and all that good stuff work? How do I actually create these, these action steps? Because again, sometimes, you know, all kinds of people are watching my videos and it's hard to judge where are you at on the spectrum and it's never going to be you're never going to be able to to please everybody pretty much but since this is a nurture in the settings we do want to have stop on response on i would set stop on response on but um it was off here so we might keep it off but if it's a nurture i usually have it on and depending on if you want them to re-enter you can have that on or off but without further ado let's go ahead and move on to the second automation, which is about sending product recommendations using GPT-4. The original workflow here was order placed, and so this is more for e-commerce, but again, it could be any trigger. It could be a tag, it could be a form, it could be a payment received, an invoice, whatever you might wanna have. And then we've got the GPT action step right here again, and we've got a custom prompt and we're saying, hey, you're a sales manager at my company that sells electronic products. And again, this is just an example. So I don't think I have to read through this example here necessarily. I actually did go ahead and test it with some of my personal data. And so let's have a look at the prompt that I created with my personal data, uh, kind of geared towards you guys. And I said, you're a sales manager at Smarter Flow Company that sells the all-in-one marketing software high level. You have five types of products, snapshot automations, group coaching calls, one-on-one -on -one consulting calls, free trial to high level, and a community. The customer has started a free trial, uh, write a concise email and a friendly tone to the customer, thanking him for the signup and suggesting them for other products to buy from. So the email that I received in response to this chat GPT prompt, again, we basically just place the custom value here into the email, is uh, pretty much this one. It said, again, the subject line and the actual body, which isn't ideal, but it says, Hi, Jonathan, thank you for signing up for the free trial for high level. We're thrilled to have you on board and can't wait to see um, how our software helps you streamline and boost your marketing efforts. And it's like, hey, to further exp uh, enhance your experience results, I'd love to introduce you to uh, some additional resources we offer. Snapshots automations, group coaching calls, the one-on-one -on -one consulting calls, the community access. So it did exactly what I wanted it to, to do. I didn't really give it any more context. I don't think the formatting with these stars is ideal. Usually this makes text uh, bold. And I guess, again, in the prompt, you could tell it to leave that away. But I think this is a very concise little email. And um, I think it's crazy that AI is capable of doing this within Go High Level. And if we focus back on the bigger picture of the strategy, the, 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 the main thing that we're doing is somebody's buying a product and then we're saying like, hey, you bought this product. How about checking out our other products that align with that product? It's exactly what McDonald's and all the fast food you know restaurants do. They're like, hey, you bought a burger. Do you want some fries and a drink? So definitely think about different upsells, cross sales that you can um, basically share with your clients within your business. But without further ado, let's move on to the final automation. And this is for Facebook comments. So the Facebook comment trigger or feature is relatively new. This is pretty much what the trigger looks like. You would say, hey, it's on this page. This is the post type and this is the specific post. And uh, I don't want to dive too deep into that, but pretty much here you would set up the action step where you would give it the context that this is a comment on my Facebook post by a user. I sell this and this. Uh, the post was, was regarding a workshop. And uh, basically we would take we, we want the AI to, or ChatGPT, to respond to that comment. So uh, that's the instructions that we're giving it. And then here we're using the respond to comment action step and we're placing the custom value for the response in here again. We could like the comments or not. And then here, this I thought this was the most interesting action step, is to analyze comment sentiment. So we're using the action step right here, analyze text sentiment. In all the previous examples, again, we used custom and gave it the prompt, but here we're just selecting analyze text sentiment. And so you could also summarize the text, translate content, and I'm excited to see what this here uh, does. And I think this will be very powerful with if else conditions, if we can classify things. 
Um, but we can pretty much do it right now already. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take um, this as the input, the comment itself. And we do have a little prompt right here as well to say, hey, if it's positive, do this. If it's negative, do this. And we need to add that to this if else condition right here. So to create an if else condition, let me just show that real fast. You would just select if else, and then you would create branches. And so within this if else condition, we basically, if we go back to all actions, we just said GPT, and then we took the, you know, we got to select one of the two uh, responses, and it's pretty much the sentiment response. And we're saying, hey, this response, if it's on the positive branch, let's, let's set it to positive. So then we have the positive branch right here, and then we have the non branch down here, positive. And, and so the non branch is pr pretty much just the opposite. If it's not positive, it's everything else. And that's the non branch. So the non branch is the negative branch. So to bring it all together, basically we're saying, hey, once somebody comments on the post, only if it's a positive post, reply by a Facebook interactive messenger with this message. And if it's a negative post, just end the workflow and don't do anything. So for the positive, again, we're saying, hey, thanks for showing interest in our workshop. Here's the meeting invite. Like we wanna make you our customer. And for the negative one, we're just saying, I'm, I'm sorry you hate your life. And we're pretty much ignoring them. And as promised, I did also want to show you how you can get these workflows into your own high level account. Pretty much all you have to do is you have to click on automations and then create a workflow, select a recipe. I got you guys. These were all just recipe pre-configured by high level. I didn't create these workflows, but I thought it was very interesting to see and get inspiration from high level, how high level itself recommends using AI. And again, really what you do with this and how you leverage this within your business and your workflows, your, your mind is the only limit. So if you need inspiration, comment down below and ask me any questions. Uh, but pretty much again, if you want these workflows, it's this recipe right here. It's uh, this recipe right here. And then it was this recipe right here. So if you just hit select, uh, it'll start loading those exact workflows. That's exactly what these recipes are. They're like small snapshots just for specific workflows and specific uh, use cases and pre-configured workflows or automations by high level for high level. So very powerful. Again, you can uh, get all of this stuff into your account by just selecting those recipes. And you can see this one does look a little bit different. So this is not one that I actually did use. Um, so check out all of the recipes that High Level does have to offer. They're extremely powerful and they're always a good foundation to start with. And that's a wrap for today. Let me know if you have any questions, comment them down below. If you need help with High Level, I do have a free community with free courses uh, that I'm launching within the next two weeks. And I do have a team that helps with consulting calls. I myself have daily group coaching calls as well. So you're not here on your own to learn High Level. I'm happy to help. And I really want to be the Alex Hermosi of high level industry, basically the person who makes real high level education available to everybody and at the cheapest possible rate, or that's why I'm creating these videos for free so that anybody can really get access uh, to the knowledge that they need to grow their business, no matter where they're located or no matter what their budget is. So if again, you have any questions, comment them down below. That's exactly how I created this video here today because somebody commented on it and I was like, hey, let me help them out and create a video for them. So I'll see you on the next video and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Peace.